Good morning, my friends. Just tying up my shoelaces. Right outside uh, the bird and tortoise refuge where I'm staying. So as you can't hear the uh, rooster. It's been cock-a-doodle-dooing in it for a while, but it seems to have gone quiet. You can hear the other birds though. And uh, I'm just finishing up here, but while I do, let's do as we always do, ground in with some, oh, let's get my GPS going. Uh, ground in with some element of nature. You need to touch something to feel something alive or at least put your feet on the ground as my dear friend Sanjay Raul reminded me um, Mother Ground is still under the earth under the cement she's still all around us I am going to reach I know what I'm going to do actually for my nature I'm going to reach up just because I'm in this place and touch a mango I'm touching a growing mango it's very small now and they're ready to be picked, but it's on its way. Pretty cool thing to start with. All right, are you ready to begin? In three, two, and one. Oh, I have a special one for you today. I am going to take us... There's two ways I could go here. Well, first, let's just take a little detour for a second. Let's just go for a little run on the beach to begin. So you heard me just leave my little refuge place. And now I'm on the beach. Isn't that crazy? Seconds from the beach. Just run along here for a few moments. The sun isn't up yet. It's not dark. It's at twilight time. Just came down here yesterday night and uh Let's just run along here for a few minutes. Just came here yesterday night and um, ooh, there's something in the water there. It's not doing anything. Maybe it's just a bit coral. Um, watched the sunset, which was spectacular. Uh, and it got me thinking about something which I want to talk about in a little bit. Um, but first, let's do our... God, it's so peaceful. You can hear the waves crashing in the background over by the uh, where the coral is. But then here, right by the... by the... I don't know, where the, where the water is coming in, it's just, like, barely lapping onto the shore. Just so calm. Um... But yeah, I want us, let's do our usual things. Um, on this run today, we're gonna go somewhere that's less than, ooh, less than, um, you know, scenic uh, for about 10 minutes, so I can tell you some stuff there. Um, but I wanna st- start us off with our usual um, connecting exercises. So, we're only ready to begin with the body scan. Okay, starting at the top of your head, working your way down, going into your eyes, all around the eyes, making sure they're nice and relaxed. (laughs) Nice and relaxed, going around to the back of your head, just feeling the back of your head for a moment, coming back around to the front. Sure that jaw is loose. Sometimes we hold tension in our jaw. We'll be avoiding that as much as we can. Looking way down into the front of your neck, round to the back, looking nice and calm. Oh, that noise is just the best noise in the world, right? Oh, working way down into your shoulders down 
take your upper arms into the lower arms. Bring into the elbows, and wrists, and fingers. Make sure you've got a nice loose grip. I'm leaving the beach now, so we'll come back to it later. Got a nice loose grip, not holding on too tight to the feelings of the day. There's some nice little bruises. When you're going back to your torso, going into your chest, down into your stomach, then round to the lower back. Going down into the glutes, the hips, the pelvis. As Tommy was saying, make sure, well, I guess that's a bit up, but let's make sure breathing is, is set. It's a nice diaphragmatic breathing into the lower part of our stomach. Going back to those legs, up to the quads, and around the back to the hamstrings. And then coming into the knees, the front of the knee, the back of the knee. Going into your shins, calf. Finally, we're going to our ankle, both the inside and the outside. Into your heel. And the arch, the top of the foot, and last but not least, our little toesies. Let's just take a breath in. Other than being distracted by my roosters all around. <laughs> How's your body feeling? What's your body jumping to in terms of attention? Is it something you've been ignoring that maybe you should go get checked out if so this is me telling you after this run go check it out go do the exercises you're supposed to be doing whatever it is <laughs> those roosters there's a lot of them huh <laughs> it's funny I was showing my kids yesterday the uh, the, around the refuge and uh, one of the cockatoos is really likes me and likes to be on my arm on my shoulder on my leg just sitting with me um and uh his name's sweetie and um yeah so i was saying my daughter's uh sweetie and around and the rooster's like Bailey's never seen a rooster, but like, you know, she immediately knew what it was. So I guess they do a good job of drawing them <laughs> in, in my, uh, books and stuff. Okay, so in a moment, we're gonna move on to our scan. But first, let's do a mental check-in. So I wanna ask you right now, how are you? How are you really? It's just, a minute or so just to think about how you're feeling mentally and just imagine what you'd be telling me if we were together right now and you felt like this was a safe space and you felt comfortable doing so what would you tell me
last few seconds. Okay. Thank you for taking the time to share that with yourself. Thank you for taking the time to think about what you would say to share with me. Even if, if we were in the middle of life, maybe you wouldn't be comfortable sharing that. But the intention was there, so thank you. Okay, as for me, what would I say? Um, the biggest thing that comes to mind is appreciation for being here. Uh, I want to talk a bit later. I shared on my social media about uh, an incredible moment that happened yesterday on Earth Day. Um, and it just felt so affirming and spiritual for me. Um, but also, I haven't even shared anywhere about what happened the rest of the day. It was a pretty insane day. And I can't wait to tell you more. But I'm feeling just immense gratitude for this moment last night and for this moment of being here and uh, just, yeah, there's so much nature around me. Every time I look at something that's alive, I feel just gratitude for this opportunity. Um, I do feel a little bit nervous. Tomorrow is the marathon with Joe, um, and I'm really going to have to concentrate for five hours uh, and it's going to be hot because I'm running here it's five something in the morning uh, 5.45 in the morning and uh, it's already warm probably 70 plus and uh, we're starting at 5am which is scary in itself because it's going to be dark and I'm going to have to you know, use my headlamp to negotiate with Kyle and I to see um, but also you know with the heat there's a bit of nerves of how am I, I going to be able to do this am I going to I don't know it's unknown so that's a bit lingering there um, and I'll tell you a bit more about the coral reefs I've seen last night there is on this whole trip been a little bit of bittersweet being proud and grateful and happy to be here but also sad for the damage um, and being able to hold both of those things in my heart at the same time is definitely there And then we'll still be on a main road, but I'll be on a path, not literally running next to traffic. Don't worry, I'm on a shoulder, right at the edge. So we start the uh, sensors check-in when we get there. And we go from there. I ran along this path yesterday and did a... Uh, 10 by 30 second workout just something to wake up my legs and they felt surprisingly good um, but it's weird this week so last week I think my mileage was like 33 or something and this week it's going to be like 80 something 81 because of the two marathons in one week um, <laughs> so yeah going to be funny to look at the difference in mileage just obviously because of the Boston being on a Monday um, otherwise it would have been pretty similar okay we're just getting onto the path and so let's start with a check in with our nose and our mouth, our smell and our taste. Let's go take a deep breath. What do you smell? What 
what do you think? It's still a little bit loud here. Okay, I'm moving on. Let's do here. If, you, if it's safe for you to do so, and you'd like to, take your headphones out, and you're just gonna listen for around 30 seconds or so. What do you hear in your surroundings? If you prefer to just listen to my surroundings, the beach, the waves, the cockadoodaloos, you're welcome to do that too. Let's just go do that now. few more seconds. Okay. I heard obviously the waves and the cars. I heard keys jangling. I hear my footsteps. I heard the birds. Not just the roosters, but other birds. And I heard the wind past my ears. What do you hear? Moving on, I'm going to go to a sense of tactile touch, feel. just want you to be in your body and just follow it where your attention naturally goes. What do you feel? I feel sweat down my side of my face, I feel the wind blowing that sweat, I feel my fingertips touching my hand, I feel my feet, one foot a little achy, nothing bad, just gentle. I feel my hair bouncing on the back of my head, and I feel warm air. Okay, last but not least, our vision, our sight. I want to tell you a funny story actually, because I just, before we do that, yesterday, right at this point I'm at right now, I turned to my left to look at the beach, and there's a giant turtle, sea turtle, just right at the edge of the water, just lying, sitting there. My first thought was, oh my God, is it hurt? Please don't be dead. <laughs> um, but then, I went, morning, I went down to the, to the water, and there was a man who was coming up and said, is he, well, I think I said something like, is that what I think it is? And he said, yep. And I said, is it okay? And he said, uh, yes, just having a nap. And I was like, oh. So I actually recorded the moment this happened, so you'll get to see it. If you have uh, Instagram or Facebook, you'll be able to see it. Um, not sure when I'm going to put all my stories up on Instagram. Kind of don't want to spend my time doing that right now. Uh, but you will see it if you follow my stories. But anyway, it's just hanging out there. Just big turtle. Apparently that's quite rare, but yeah, just got to see it randomly on my run. It was just, just taking a nap. It was so weird, so cool. 
What a moment. Okay, so on that note, let's see what you see. I'm gonna give you a minute or two just to look around. I'm not gonna guide you, but as always, just make sure you're honing in on some details. Like things you are passing. Just make sure you're not just glancing. You're really looking at the intricacies of that, whatever it is. Okay, ready? Off you go. seconds. Okay. Okay, this is going to be a big one for me. What do I see? I see rocks, black rocks. Maui is one giant volcano. I see black rocks, all kinds of sizes. I see red dirt. I see another island off in the distance. I see trees bent in every which way, just beautifully unique, each and every one of them. I see benches, I see people coming towards me, I see the waves crashing on the ocean, and that's just one direction. Now let's look the other way. I see palm trees, I see fields, but different kind of fields to what you and I would see. These are like, I don't even know what the term would be. Uh, just left untouched lands. See the mountain. Went up yesterday for the look, Haleakala mountain in the uh, cloud cover. Yeah, a lot. And it is another moment to just cherish the fact that I see all these things tall grass, birds flying. Just so much beauty. So, so appreciative. Okay. Now, if you this is your first time joining me for a together run, you picked a good one. <laughs> uh, so I would like you to tell me a little bit about yourself. What would you tell me? If this is your um, more than first together run, I want you to tell me an update. What have you been up to since you last ran with me? And actually, on that note, did you do the Boston, pre-Boston shakeout with me and Tommy? That was just, I mean, I think you heard it in my voice and my reactions. I just let the camera roll. It was, that was mind-blowing. <laughs> okay, so if you haven't done that one, go back to that one. Because it's the one before this one, and it is different in total opposite extreme to this but special in its own way and we do also get the connecting to nature part at the beginning okay actually before we go to that I just want to say you know sharing with you about this perfection I just ran past maybe 20 empty bottles and beer cans um, on the side of the road on the side of the path so while things may look what you will see on social media, that's a perfect example, like perfection, there's always more to it because, uh, you know, there's people in pain uh, everywhere. And I got to witness some of that last night. I might tell you a bit about that in a minute. But just that reminder, remember we never see the whole story. I'm telling you today, but there you go. All right, tell me some news give you a minute or so to do that.
few more seconds. Okay, thank you for sharing with me. Uh, if you wouldn't have shared in person, that's okay. But I love the idea of you, you know, just putting it out, even if it's just in your own mind of what you have been experiencing. Okay, well, there's a lot of runners along here. This is testing my self-conscious. <laughs> um, Okay, so what can I start with? I mean, there is, I could spend an hour right now telling you about all the things that have happened, all the just, I don't know, there's, there's so much I could share. But I'm gonna maybe work backward now. I mean, I haven't even told you about Boston. So let's begin there. The whole weekend was just, I don't know if I can unpack it yet, but there was so much love, so much joy, so much appreciation to, to be back amongst one another. And uh, I just had a lot of very powerful moments. And some of them weren't, actually most of them, I did the, the one shake out run at Tracksmith. And yes, that was, I mean, you got to hear about that, so I'm not going to go on that. But most everything else was small stuff. So, big puddle. Um, it was one-on-one, one-on-few time with people. Uh, like, for example, one thing that stands out was on my final day, I went to visit Sid Baptista, who you remember from the podcast, who's going to come on for a full show as that was the one I messed up, lost this file. Sid Baptista had a store open, his Pioneer store. I went to hang out with him. I tried to get him twice, missed him. Third time I went by, I found, I got him there. He was there and I got to meet um, the co-founders of We Run We Run 313 in Detroit, Joe and Lance. I got to talk to them. And I got to talk to these two other women from their group, Audrey and Charmaine. And it was just, I'd seen Audrey and Charmaine earlier in the day, which again is a funny story in itself, that I was standing waiting to meet Jared Ward for lunch. And uh, I learned that day not to point Jared Ward towards the street. (laughs) Because we had, I mean, he had, multiple, multiple people coming up and, oh my god, Jerry Ward, like talking and trying to talk to him, but even I had people coming up to me and I was facing the other direction um, but yeah, we were sat right near the street, anyway I was waiting for Jared and um, and they came over and they talked to me and you know, they were friends with Tommy, Tommy runs and we were talking and, uh, and then Jared comes up and we bring him into the conversation and later on, when I was with them again, just happened to see them in the uh, happened to see them in the, um, the Pioneer store. They were like, "Who was that guy?" And I was like, "Oh, he's a 2016 Olympian." And they were like, "What?" So it was quite funny. But anyway, I had like a really meaningful, powerful, just genuine conversation with them, and it wasn't recorded. But it didn't matter, it was so powerful. So that jumps out to mind. I had so many nice moments with people I care about. I had an out with Jeremy, podcast editor, which was so special. And then the race itself was, I mean, Kyle texted me yesterday and said, did you see all these cameras? Like you're smiling in every photo. And I was like, no, just was smiling the whole way. Um, I'm gonna turn around. I just was smiling the whole way. 
and that is really is the reality of it like I it was just such a joy um, and I was so appreciative of it especially because of the last time I ran Boston where I didn't enjoy it um, it just meant more so that race was just a gift I keep saying that right now but it really does feel that way um, and so yeah I yeah that was special I mean I went to the Black Unicorn Marathoners celebration before the race uh, just to celebrate all the well not all but many of the black athletes who were running um, my friend Alexandria Will another podcast guest invited me as a guest to come and I went and it was just so inspiring there was a guy there who was like 73 and he was saying that he started running in the 60s and you know there's all kinds of really inspiring people to meet and I had a really just a chair of funny moment I was sitting in uh, I was sitting across the other side to Meb and a few rows back but at one point I looked and he, we locked eyes and we did that really awkward you know that wave where you kind of quickly put your hand up and down and you just oh no it wasn't actually that I quickly put my hand up and down and he did that like wave where you know you're like kind of if you're teaching a child how to wave um but it was like a typical dorky runner moment um <laughs> between us it was really funny um we both just laughed uh I didn't get to see him again well actually I did for like two seconds at the finish line um but working on changing that running reunion reunion um anyway so that was special to be at that event I mean there's honestly there's too much like team of the vision dinner oh god it's too many moments too many moments uh and I should mention yes I was in a room with Shalane and Alexi and uh Adrian Hazlitt and uh and Kyle and Lisa Williams who Alexi was running with we had our own little room and that was really cool just to kind of be around that but yeah okay so that's that um Boston was just amazing and then I flew directly over here and there's a part of me that was really felt a lot of guilt that whole day of like I am literally flying 11 hours in one direction right now um and I don't need to do this and I don't need to do this um but to be honest it feels like to be totally honest with you it feels like a bit of a cop cop out that I'm using I'm not using Joe you know what I mean like I'm doing this for Joe yes I'm giving I'm running with him whatever it takes I've come here to support him he means a lot to me because he was the first person I was a guide for and he's part, been part of our community for many years just a really good guy and I care about him so I can lean on that but part of me is like you still didn't need to do this like you know you could have found him someone in Maui or you could have found someone in California so they weren't flying as far so why did you have to be the one to come over here when you could have just passed you know helped someone else have this opportunity so I did feel a lot of guilt on that day of like is this just my ego wanting to go to Maui and honestly probably partly it is um, and so that was weighing on my mind but I made it here as I said earlier, I'm staying at a bird and tortoise refuge, which is very uh, crunchy hipster. I'm just, it's kind of what Airbnb originally was. I'm staying in a room in their house, I have a shared shower, my own bathroom. But, um, you know, it's very basic and that's fine. But there's these animals roaming around. 
and I've met this um, guy who works there called Josiah, who's this like 25 year old uh, total free spirit, says right on all the time, long blonde hair, you get it, <laughs> and uh, had a lot of good conversations with him, and uh, yeah, it's been, and it, yeah, it's been just good in that way, just reminding me of, you know, the glitz and the glamour of Boston and other places is one thing, but also there's something special about just simplicity, and so, yeah. Now, since I've been here, I've been by myself, I've been exploring, did a practice, uh, like a chick out run with Joe one day, but other than that, it's been me following my heart, following my intuition, and doing what felt right to me. And I've really enjoyed that. It's been good to, you know, sit on the beach and read. I've written more in my journal than I have in weeks just like sharing everything I'm experiencing and my thoughts and feelings, just taking down time, but also getting little chunks of work done, um, doing what I want to do. Uh, when I have kids, it often feels like you never get to do that. So, to, you know, I have no one to answer to but myself. It's been pretty special. Um, and I've been tell you about snorkeling in a minute. I've been snorkeling each day and uh, yeah so let's go into yesterday. Okay actually first totally missed the 36 minute 30 minute group. Sorry about that friends. I'm assuming they've already gone. Let's um yeah let's do a few strides now. We'll just do this be the strides and then probably won't do any more because I will be on the beach for a finish. Okay, so do you know what? I'm going to just use the restroom. So I'm going to pause you a second. Actually, you know what? I think I'm good. I'm going to leave you. I'm going to take a bit of a risk. I'm going to leave my phone here and I'm just going to leave you listening to the waves for a minute. Okay, I'll be right back. Never mind, it's locked. <laughs> okay. Have to find somewhere before I get back to the beach because I'm not going to be able to enjoy the beach. Okay. Um, and that's the one downside of where I am is it's a bit of a fact to get in. There's a padlock and you have to clean off your feet and these multiple steps. Anyway, okay. Um, yesterday. So I knew it was Earth Day. And I knew I wanted to find some way to greet the morning. Uh, I shared most of this on my Instagram of this morning section. So if you haven't read that on Facebook or Instagram, I encourage you to go do so. But I had an incredible moment at the top of Haleakala uh, Crater, which is a volcano. Maui is a volcano, but this is the crater of the volcano, a national park. One of the, like, I think... I said it was one of the 11th best national park or something and, um, in the US. And uh, I had to get up at, I got up at 1.50 because I was 1.3 miles from the pickup point. So I walked down there talking to my parents, the one advantage of being a million hours behind everyone else. <laughs> um, got on this bus, it was darkness for well, hours, um, and went up this mountain. Um, we went up to 10,000 feet, or almost 10,000 feet, and uh, tour guide said something like, uh, so we're told to tell the, tell the people on our tours that they're not allowed to go up this trail if you, if you bring the car you can go up this trail. And uh, so I stood where he said, you know, being the rule follower I am. And I just 
just, it didn't feel right. And I just had a feeling of something more. So I went up the trail in the dark using my phone as a torch. I went up the multiple stairs. Oh, sorry, the multiple, yeah, I guess it was kind of steps. I hiked to the top and halfway up I could hear like some kind of prayer chant in an, at a nearby little peak. And it was beautiful to listen to. Um, and then I kept on going and I could hear the same chant, but coming from a woman, a Native American woman. And uh, I just had an urge to be near her. So I sat near her, eventually asked her if I could um, sit with her. And she immediately gave me her blanket. <laughs> it wasn't actually that cold, so Haleakala gets really hot. I mean, cold and up there, like, can be, you know, below freezing or around freezing. It's usually 40 to 50 Fahrenheit. But I, again, just followed what felt right, and I didn't wear, wear um, short, uh, pants. I wore shorts. And honestly, that was primarily because I knew I'd have a walk walk back and I'd be too hot <laughs> but um, anyway so it wasn't that cold it was like 55 degrees up there so I wasn't really that cold but I I ended up she showed, showed me her phone which had the lyrics to what she was singing in English and in her native tongue and uh, I did the prayer with her and I just did it as best I could and it was a beautiful moment watching the sun come up as that was happening and looking down at this one of if not the most beautiful sight I've ever seen in my life was in front of me and it was just yeah spiritual I felt like the mountains wanted me to be there I felt so connected to mother earth to our land it was just amazing came down, we stopped by a botanical garden on the way back, and we um, uh, had breakfast, and I had like pancakes with macadamia nuts, fresh macadamia nuts, and coconut syrup, it was delicious, and uh, I was going to say the woman I met, her name was Gentle Thunder, uh, also known as Anna, Anna, and um, I was going to go to she invited me to come to an event. She was hosting a meditative sound event, which I felt really powerfully that I wanted to go. However, it was an hour away. I don't have a car, an hour away from where I am. I don't have a car. And I got a bit confused in what she was offering, or, or inviting me to. And so I said, no, I uh, have to, talking to a good friend who I've already mentioned in this run so far <laughs> but who basically said I don't know if I would go so close to the marathon so I, I didn't part of me regrets not going but also again didn't feel right okay so then I came back uh, and later on I went to go snorkeling again and I'd been told by the people who live at the house I'm at where sorry we never did strides did we okay we're just going to do a few in a minute I'm going to do it on that busy bit of road so I get over it quicker um I had been told where to go so I went over to where they said and the water was a lot rougher than it was the day before Okay, well, the current was really strong and it's not deep so I didn't feel like I knew I was fine but I also had my hands out in front of me because I did feel a bit nervous that like if the water came over the top of my snorkel um, which at times it felt like it would um, I wanted to be able to like stand up quickly and if my hands were by my side it's harder to do that um, and so I'm sorry I just saw a dead squirrel that wasn't there on the way back on the way out 
it had this like blood everywhere. It must have just died. Oh, that, whew, that wasn't nice to see. Circle of life, but it's not nice to see an animal killed. Okay, let me take a breath and then I'll continue. Sending love to that squirrel. Hope you had a life that felt right for you. Okay, so then I was going around this area. It's not that deep, so I'm trying not to touch coral. That's like my primary thing I'm doing because, again, it's not deep, so I'm just trying to really be gentle. And there's two things that speak out to me. One is the amazing thing, which I'll tell you about in a second. And two was the fact that the coral was primarily brown with occasional bits of yellow or white or a yellow or a purpley color, which I hope was some of it still alive. But brown is dead. That coral was dead. And that really, again, that bittersweet feeling of gratitude for being able to um, be in this moment that I could look at these. All right, let me continue in a minute. Let's do some strides. I, I don't know how well you can hear me with these cars. Okay, ready? Three, two, and one. again. Three, two, and one. And come to the jog. Okay, I'm there. Timing wise, I'm just going to go for whatever I go for. You can drop off at any point or keep listening. So yeah, I was circling around very apparent that coral was coral was dead which really made me sad because I know human activity has done that and I myself was out there you know as I said being very careful with the coral but I I know I touched the coral because I have a graze and a bruise on my leg from the day before for doing that exact thing. And you know, I did the right sunscreen, I was very careful, and but it's still an addict to it. And just seeing it, knowing that probably 50 years ago it was vibrant and bright and colourful, and there would be so many more fish. And in some ways now it felt like a graveyard. Um, there's few fish. No, there's, there's a decent amount of fish, but I know in my heart that there was a lot more fish. These are the strongest survivors that are still there. So anyway, so I'm going around and then all of a sudden I see it, a sea turtle. And it is huge, like probably four feet tall. Weigh, oh God, you don't really want to know how much it weighs, 200 pounds. Um, huge. And I'm just watching it. Like me and the sea turtle, just like a meat, like I could have touched it. I was, uh, if I wanted to, I kept my distance. I wanted to, you know, get and be respectful of it. But it was right there. And I was just floating, again, trying to be gentle, watching it for a good five minutes, just trying to soak in that moment that was a life once in a lifetime moment and and then I see something out of the corner of my eye and there's another one so close to me I could touch it like it was right we were looking at each other dead in the eyes 
and um, straight in the face or whatever the term is. It was unbelievable. So now I'm watching these two turtles feeding, both kitten like knocked around a bit by the waves on top. And it was just, I, I can't even, just again on Earth Day, so connected to Mother Earth and just this world reminding me we're all connected. We're all just trying to live. Um, and it was powerful. And I didn't stay in there too long after that. Uh, I looked around at a few more fish and some really beautiful ones. But I wanted to get back and process. So I went back and showered. And then I went and sat and watched the sunset, which was, again, spectacular. And, you know, I said on in my Instagram post, on my bucket list is, one of the things it said is to see, it says something like, to see the most spectacular sunrise imaginable or something like that. And I thought that was gonna be the morning. When I booked that tour, I thought, right, this is it. Let me check it off. But it wasn't that. I mean, there was a beautiful sunrise, but there was also cloud cover. And so it always could have been better. And um, always could have been better. And I also, what does that even mean? Like, I, if you look at it in terms of sun, sunset, or sunrise, with the most unbelievable sight of a volcano crater in front of it, when you put those together, is that it? Or last night when I was watching the sunset, it was like a kind of, you know, textbook what you would expect. I actually took a time-lapse video, which I will put on my stories when I eventually upload them. And it was spectacular in terms of like, it, there was some clouds on either side, so it just like extenuated and made it more powerful, the punch of the, of the um, sunset and the colors and just the beach in front and the mountains to the side, like that was it too, right? And I just decided last night that that one, I'm checking it off. I've seen spectacular sunsets and sunrises in my life, but they've never felt quote unquote good enough. But when is ever gonna be good enough? What is the perfect sunrise or sunset? Is it, you know, somewhere like at the crater where I happen to be there before a hurricane comes through and the sky is purple and blue and yellow and like the most just beautiful thing you could see. But knowing that then within a few hours, that community, that place is gonna be slammed with something so destructive. So I just really got thinking about that and how, what is, what is good enough? Just like I don't ever think I'm good enough and you likely don't think you're good enough. When will, what is a perfect sunrise look like? So I decided I'm checking it off. I don't know which one will come to mind when I'm 80 years old and I look through that, but I don't care. What matters is, that I've had the honor, the privilege, the gift of being able to do this. Okay, friends, when I get to the beach, I'm gonna come to a walk. I'm just gonna walk back and let you listen with me. Um, I wanna remind you, if you can share these on social media, that really helps people to find these. Um, so take a picture. Actually, let's, let's do that when we get to the beach when I stop please don't feel like well Tina's got freaking Maui and beaches and palm trees in the background and I've got 
a garbage bin and uh, okay, I'm going to come to a walk. I've got a garbage bin and I've got nothing exciting. Please, like, this just helps me to feel like I'm running with you and help me appreciate that you enjoy these. So just take a picture. It's not about the what you see. It really, it's about me and you connecting, doing this together. So I know that that was a very random spot for a stop, so not many of you probably will stop. But please, whew, it's not a weed very strong. <laughs> uh, but please, um, take a picture for me. For me. I do these for you, I don't mind carrying around a mic, I don't mind doing all these things. But take a picture for me, please. Whether you finish now, whether it's now or in a bit, just do it. Um, so, I mean, I could talk for another hour on this experience. Um, this trip is just, I mean, I haven't even done the marathon tomorrow, but this trip is just so much to share, and I just feel so fortunate for this experience. Um, thank you for joining me. As I said, I love if you share, when you share on social media. You can also um, send me an email if you enjoy these. And I'm just going to let us fade out with the sound of the ocean. I'm not going to say anything else. I'm going to give you this time of listening while we walk back. Maybe you could do a body scan while you're walking or running. If you're still running, do a body scan to finish up. And just think about what opportunities in your life have you had to be grateful for. And it doesn't have to be a sunrise, sunset, like I just mentioned. It doesn't have to be over Maui. When's good enough? Maybe you're good enough is, I mean, I remember a spectacular sunrise over the apartment building in my second year, or well, third year of college being spectacular. Maybe it's that. What are you appreciative of? All right, friends. See you on Wednesday for a running reunion. And Friday for a regular episode. Aloha. I said I wasn't going to say anything, but I can see a sea turtle head. It keeps popping up. <laughs> Let's see when it comes up again. There it is. Hi friends, just a quick message to say a big thank you to the Running For Real team. While I may be the face of Running For Real and the voice behind the podcast, there are a group of people who are working tirelessly to provide everything that runners could need within our community to make our community stronger, better and evolve and grow and learn from one another. We are working really hard to make Running For Real the place we believe it can be within our community. I just want to take a moment to thank everyone on our team. That is Victoria, Stacy, Sandy, Sally, Maria, Kelsey, Kat, Jeremy, and Erica. I appreciate each and every one of you and the hard work that you put in.
Now let's get back to the show. <laughs> 